Welcome to this workshop on Cascade Control. In this workshop you'll have an opportunity to gain experience using Cascade Control and to learn about the benefits of dynamic reset and bypass. In the first part of the exercise we'll identify the process dynamics and then look at the slave as well as the master response in automatic mode to a set point change. We will then introduce a disturbance into a process and examine the behavior of cascade control when a disturbance is impacting our uh, slave loop. We will then uh, look at the techniques that are required to enable dynamic reset on our PID and to uh, look at its behavior in terms of set point change and compare it to the cascade without dynamic uh, reset. Last, we will then examine the uh, cascade control with bypass enabled on our uh, slave loop. In the exercise, we have a dynamic process simulation in which the disturbance is used as well as the manipulated parameter to determine two process outputs. One uh, process output responds very quickly to any input change. That uh, process output is used in the slave loop as its control parameter. The uh, second output of our process responds much slower and is the input to our master, the control parameter of our master loop. Through this combination then of master slave, we're able to very precisely uh, maintain our set point of our master loop. So let's get started with our exercise. The first part of our exercise we'll look at the process dynamics by putting our slave loop into manual and making a step change in its output. Uh, as we change the output of our uh, slave loop by step, we can then examine the uh, process response and what we see is is that when the input changes both process outputs do change but the uh, one output that's used by the slave loop is much faster in responding than the uh, other. This is uh, clear when we look at a chart we see the uh, fast responding parameter as used in the slave loop respond quickly and uh, settle out the other output of our process is much slower to reflect the input change and that will be the input used in our master loop. If we uh, put our uh, slave loop into automatic we can then uh, change the set point and examine its response to a set point change and that's what we'll do here. We'll introduce a set point change we see that in response to that the output has changed and very quickly the control parameter is brought up to set point by the slave loop. Uh, under this condition of it being an auto, the back cal is used by the master loop to set its output to follow along. We can change the uh, slave loop to cascade now its set points is determined by the master loop and let's put the master into manual temporarily so we can change its output. So we will change the output of our master loop by a step and uh, when we change the output we notice that that output change is immediately reflected in terms of the uh, set point uh, to our uh, a slave loop and so it shows up there. So the output of our of our master loop becomes a set point of our slave. By putting the uh, master loop into automatic mode we can then examine uh, behavior of the loop when we change the uh, set point. When we change the set point of our master loop we notice that it's change in output impacts then the set point of our slave. The slave then adjusts its output to achieve its new set point value which in turn uh, means that the, uh, the master loop is driven to its set point by that change. So through the combination of the master slave we're able to achieve the uh, set point of our master loop. Uh, this can be seen in our chart where we put the uh, loop into automatic. Then we see that the um, 
uh, set point of our slave loop was changed by the master loop to allow it to come to set point. So these work together then to achieve a set point of the master loop. We can look at the uh, dynamic behavior when we introduce a disturbance into our um, a slave loop. When we introduce a step change, you notice it has an immediate impact upon the control parameters used by our slave loop. Since the slave loop is very fast in responding, it can quickly correct for that disturbance to maintain its target that was dictated by the uh, master loop. Uh, let's look at the um, chart of this. As we see, when we introduce the disturbance, the um, slave loop very quickly adjusted its output to compensate, and as a result, the control parameter of our master loop uh, didn't vary at all hardly from set point. And that's one of the major benefits of Cascade, that is to be able to take the disturbance with the inner loop and avoid it impacting the outer loop, the, the master loop. One of the uh, things that is often provided in uh, Cascade Control is dynamic reset. Uh, to enable dynamic reset, in this particular instance, we have to have the, the uh, loop in um, out of service. Uh, when we have it in out of service, we can change and set uh, dynamic reset to be enabled. After enabling dynamic reset, uh, then in the uh, slave loop, we need to um, uh, set it where, as the one of the control options to say, uh, to provide the PV as the back cal out. And so that is uh, done with a loop out of service. So we just select uh, provide uh, PV as the back cal out. Having done this, we can now put the control loops back into service and uh, we can then uh, examine the behavior for set point change in our uh, master loop. So we'll change the set point and we'll change it by a step here. And as before, when we do a set point change, it impacts the set point of our uh, slave loop, which then uh, adjusts the output and through that we're able to achieve the uh, set point of our master loop. We can look th at this in terms of our chart and we can compare this to the previous uh, response that we saw. We can see that we have a very good dynamic response using uh, dynamic reset being enabled. This is especially helpful where the process gain of your secondary changing over its operating range uh, by using dynamic reset it can really improve the overall dynamic performance. Uh, when we go back to our uh, exercise, then we can uh, look at uh, how uh, the uh, response would be if we had a, a, a the slave loop bypassed. Uh, in startup conditions, oftentimes the measurement is not uh, reliable, and therefore we need to uh, revert back to single loop control and we can do this by enabling bypass. Uh, so uh, by putting the loop out of service and then uh, choosing uh, the control option, uh, the bypass option, we can then uh, uh, bypass uh, the secondary loop or the slave loop. Uh, the primary output then directly goes through the secondary to our uh, output of the, of, the of the slave loop. With uh, the slave loop bypass, then uh, we uh, change our set point, and as you notice, we're uh, immediately responding and coming to set point. And uh, even though the the measurement is no longer used in the in the slave loop, so on uh, startup conditions, using bypass can be very helpful in terms of allowing us to continue to operate even though the secondary measurement or the slave is no longer uh, useful. We hope this exercise has been helpful to you in understanding cascade control, dynamic reset, and bypass. And we would encourage you to use this exercise to further look at cascade control.